I'm going to tell you one truth, one lesson that you will never be told as a new Christian, not even in church. It is so foundational and it's something that I've learned so much over my Christian journey, more and more. But before I get to that, have you ever seen this? Have you ever seen where you go into church? Um, they might preach an okay message. It might be a good message. And then people interacting and talking after the service. They're not really talking about God. They're not really talking about Jesus. They might be talking about what happened um, in the news or what happened in sport or about their holiday or about something else. But so often they're not talking about God. And, and as a Christian that is genuinely seeking after God, you're thinking to yourself, I'm in this place, this church, where I really want to connect with people uh, on the level of knowing God more. I want to share that passion. I want to talk about Him. I want to have that true koinonia, that, that, that true biblical fellowship. But you can't find it. And you just feel like the loneliest person in the world. You're thinking, I can understand if I feel alone out there in the world in my job or the people I'm talking to, friends that aren't Christians, they don't get me. But in the church? And you feel even more alone because these are the people that should be sharing that passion and relating to you on that level. And this is the lesson that I want to share with you, that you won't be told as a new Christian. And it's something that is just so, so true. And because of this false expectation, a lot of people will be disappointed. And the lesson is this, that if you are pursuing God with zeal and with everything in you, and you truly desire to know Him and to live a life dead to yourself and surrendered, you will be very lonely, even in the church, especially in the church. Now, you won't be alone because you've got the presence of God, and that is so rich and so dear to you. But the thing is, the further you go in the faith, the fewer people there are that are prepared to go there with you. It's just the way it is. Different people are at different levels of maturity, but quite often, particularly in this sort of Western Christian culture, there aren't a very large percentage of people that are really pursuing God with all their heart. And even the people that look like they're on fire for God, which I hate that phrase, um, even they are lukewarm compared to the desire that you have in your heart. Now, I'm not saying there's no one. Obviously, there are people out there. You watching the video, if you watch uh, my channels, you're probably on the same uh, sort of wavelength as me in terms of your thoughts, and you wouldn't be watching videos about pursuing God if you didn't want to pursue God. So there are people out there, but most people, it's just hard to find. It's really hard to find. Um, I have connections with some believers that are just amazing. I can just relate on that deep level. But like I said, the further you go, the fewer the connections will be. But the ones that you do have will be very rich. And even within the people I connect with, there's still a varying degree of how much people are willing to live this out. How much people just get up in the morning to glorify God, to want to walk in obedience, to live a surrendered life, to die to themselves. I mean, I've gone through so much with chronic illness and loss and everything, and my main prayer isn't God uh, fix things for me. Um, although I do pray that God would work in, in circumstances, the, heart, the cry of my heart is even in the midst of this, the greater cry than fix these things is, Lord, let me know you more. Let me walk at your purpose. Let me walk in obedience to you. Let me become more like Jesus. That's the cry of my heart. And if you're watching this too, and that's the cry of your heart, then I praise God. I praise God for the work that he's done in you. It's so wonderful. It's so amazing. I stopped going to church a long time ago for the point of going there and being fed because I've studied a lot of the Bible. I've, you know, I know my theology. You can always hear great things, um, thoughts that can resonate within you. But when you've gone and you've studied the, the deep men of the faith and you've delved into the scriptures, um, you know, often there's only so deep that a sermon will be um, from the pulpit. 
Um, I've stopped going to church a long time ago to have my needs met. My needs are met in Christ. A lot of people get discouraged by that. I go to church so that I can be a blessing to others, so that I can be an encouragement to others. That's it. I just want to be a light. I want to help to point people to God in a greater way. I want to love people. I want to give them a greater example of Christ. I want to show Christ to everyone around me that I'm walking around. And I'm not surprised that many people that profess to be Christians are not sharing the same heart. I'm not surprised. In in, in my years of walking with God, it seems to be a very, very common thing. So I just want to say to you, friends, um, if you share this same heart that I share, it's so great to connect with you. That's what I love about even connecting in the comments with people that I know you just, you just get it. You just want more of God. You share the same heart. I love that so much. And I'm so grateful for you. Your fellowship, when I've had very little fellowship because of my health, it means the world to me. And I'm so blessed and so grateful. So that's my lesson that I want to share today is that um, if you're someone that's seeking after God and you're looking around and you're going, these Christians, they, they don't share the same heart that I do, not to the same extent, not to the same level. Um, they're still so caught up in all of these other things. I just want to tell you, friends, that's just, that's just often the way it is. And there will be people out there that share the same desire as you. Um, There might be few and far between, but God is calling you to be a light to those people um, around you. You can impact everyone and hopefully, who knows, whether the the fire that is in you can spread to others and they can catch a glimpse of that and inspire them because maybe no one's ever told them. Maybe they've never seen an example of Christ. Maybe they've never seen someone that wants to live like that and they're going to see it and they're going to go, wow, I want that. But one thing I would say to finish off is that you don't want to become self-righteous and think, oh, well, I'm more passionate for God than these people. Don't, don't think about it like that. Just acknowledge that you are where you are by the grace of God. He's given you this passion and this desire and just focus on you fueling it day in, day out. People might not be where they're meant to be and often they're not, but you can be the light to help them along the way. Isn't that fantastic? Isn't that great? So if you're, feeling, if you're feeling lonely in the faith, believe me, I know the feeling. I know it well. But I also know the feeling of being absolutely filled with God and not feeling alone for the second of my life because He's with me. And I get my absolute needs met in Him, my worth met in Him, my identity met in Him. He's amazing. Praise God. So friends, be a light to those around you, shine it, and no matter where you are in your faith journey, keep pressing into Christ more and more and more and more because we haven't even touched the surface of what is possible for the one who truly seeks him with all their heart. God bless you, friends.